Hello and welcome to the third video on COVID-19. And today we will discuss the most popular drug nowadays, chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine. We will discuss five basic questions regarding chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine. First, what is chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine? Second, what is the evidence behind chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine for the treatment of COVID-19? How does these drugs work against COVID-19? What are some risks of taking these anti-malarial drugs? And can we use these drugs prophylactically, basically to prevent uh, or protect ourselves from COVID-19? And in the end, I will give my final take or recommendation regarding use of these drugs. So first, what is chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine? Well, these two drugs have become very popular since President Donald Trump claimed and reported that these two drugs have been FDA approved against COVID-19 or to be given to patients with COVID-19. So first, I want to clarify these two drugs are not FDA approved. These are not FDA approved drug for COVID-19 or to be given to patients with COVID-19. However, these two drugs are FDA approved for some other indication, for example, rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. That means that doctors can use um, hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine to be given to patients with COVID-19 based on their best judgment. However, that use will be considered as off-label use. Both chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine are anti-malarial drugs which have been around since 1930s. So these drugs are used to, against malaria all around the world since 1930s. So we have almost a century of experience with these two drugs. These drugs are very effective against malaria. Um, and also these drugs used for autoimmune diseases. It's been FD approved for lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. So what's the difference between chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine? Well, they are basically two forms of the same drug. Um, and hydroxychloroquine is more popular because it's about 30 to 40 percent less toxic than chloroquine. In fact, in autoimmune world, um, for example, I'm a rheumatologist. Uh, we, I use hydroxychloroquine on daily basis. Maybe I'm giving about five to ten prescriptions of hydroxychloroquine to my autoimmune disease patients on an everyday basis. Second, what's the evidence behind hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine to be used in COVID-19 patients? Well, first of all, before I present some evidence to you, I would like to clarify that none of the studies that I'm going to present to you um, are double-blind randomized controlled trial, which is what is required generally by FDA or other uh, approval agencies around the world to consider a drug effective for a particular condition. So none of the studies I'm going to be talking about today is, has that level of evidence. However, I will present some evidence in front of you. First of all, I will present in front of you a French study by Dr. Philip Gautrey published on March 20th, 2020. In this study, they compared 20 patients who were given hydroxychloroquine at a dose of 200 milligrams three times a day as compared to 16 patients who were not given this drug. In addition to patients who got 20 patients who got hydroxychloroquine, six of them in addition also got a common antibacterial drug called azithromycin or commonly we call in US as z -Pak, which was given at 500 milligram on a day one followed by 250 milligram for the next four days, once a day. This graph represents the main results of the study. As you can see on the y-axis, we have percentage of patients who are positive with COVID-19. And on the x-axis, we have number of days since giving hydroxychloroquine. As you can also see, the green line represents hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine combination, which was given in six patients. And the blue line represents the patient who only got hydroxychloroquine, which were 14 patients. And then the black line represents the controls, basically the patients who did not get either of the two drugs. As you can appreciate, the patients who got hydroxychloroquine and, and azithromycin showed significant response and almost all of them got free of 
COVID-19 in about five days as compared to hydroxychloroquine, which was also far better than not getting hydroxychloroquine. So overall, 70% of patients who got either hydroxychloroquine alone or a combination of hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin improved as compared to only 12% when they did not get either of these two drugs. Now, most of these patients who got these drugs were symptomatic. About 80 to 90% of these patients were symptomatic. And authors also claim that the drug effect seems to be more in patients who are at symptomatic state as compared to patients, about 10 to 20% patients who were in asymptomatic stage. The second study I'm reporting today is basically a narrative by Chinese author that reported State Council of China has indicated chloroquine phosphate to be markedly effective with acceptable safety in treatment of COVID-19 associated pneumonia based on multiple uh, multi-center clinical trials conducted across China. This study reported that more than 100 patients' data demonstrated that chloroquine phosphate is superior to control in the treatment of COVID-19 pneumonia as well as making patients virus-free and shortening the course of illness. They further report that they have recommended the inclusion of this drug in the next guidelines for prevention, diagnosis and treatment of pneumonia caused by COVID-19 issued by National Health Commission of People's Republic of China. However, the problem is that the authors don't provide any data on those more than 100 patients that were treated with chloroquine phosphate in this study. The third report also comes from China, where various doctors or experts in COVID-19 uh, got together and came up with a consensus statement on this disease. <clears throat> These authors concluded that chloroquine significantly improved the success rate of treatment, shortens the hospital stay, and improved patient's outcome. They further recommend that chloroquine phosphate 500 mg twice a day should be given for 10 days in patients diagnosed with mild, moderate, and severe cases of coronavirus or COVID-19 infection, provided there is no contraindication to this drug. The fourth report on this comes from scientists working in a laboratory condition. They showed that chloroquine successfully inhibited the replication of this virus. Now, in addition to these reports, the Dutch Center of Disease Control and Italian Society of Infectious Diseases also recommend using chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine in patients with COVID-19 infection. Now, after these positive reports, I want to present to you a negative report on this, which also comes from Chinese uh, doctors and is also a controlled trial. This new study was led by Shanghai Public Health Clinical Center in China. It involved 30 patients who were hospitalized with confirmed COVID-19 infection. Half of the patients received 400 milligrams of hydroxychloroquine a day for five days along with usual care, whereas other half only received the usual care, which served as a control group. Now, as per the results reported, 93% of patients in the control group were tested negative for COVID-19 at seven days as compared to 87% patients in hydroxychloroquine group that demonstrate that there was no significant advantage of using hydroxychloroquine over the usual care. But there's a catch. First, the usual care involved not only supportive care like ventilator, oxygen, uh, fluids, and other, other uh, supportive care, but also included giving antiviral drug to both the groups, control groups, as well as hydroxychloroquine group. Now, any scientist know then it is very difficult to show improvement on an already effective treatment. So if you're giving strong antiviral drugs to both the groups, it is possible that even though hydroxychloroquine was effective, it could not demonstrate that effectiveness given both the groups were otherwise given excellent treatment. The point we need to remember is 
that these antiviral drugs are not available all across the world. In poorer countries, antiviral drugs are very expensive, whereas hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine are relatively cheaper drugs. <clears throat> so even though it's a negative study, my take on it is that both the group got otherwise very effective drug, making it very difficult for hydroxychloroquine to show any superiority over the control group. My overall conclusion of all the evidence presented is that these drugs could be effective in patients with COVID-19 and perhaps given the low uh, burden um, economically, uh, it, I mean, because it's a cheaper drug and also um, uh, side effect profile of these drugs are excellent. Based on that, these drugs could be used under doctor's guidance in COVID-19 patients. With that, I hope that FDA and other agencies around the world are trying to study this with much better scientific evidence to prove it or disapprove the role of chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine in COVID-19 infection. The third question is, what are the risks of taking chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine? I would say overall the risk is rather very small and the risk of chloroquine is more than hydroxychloroquine. So hydroxychloroquine is rather very, very safe. In fact, I will say I generally give about five to 10 prescriptions a day of hydroxychloroquine and perhaps maybe thousands of prescriptions in a year and rarely ever encounter any difficulty with patients who are taking regularly hydroxychloroquine. And in this case, we are only talking about five to 10 days of a course. Common side effects from hydroxychloroquine includes simple things like headache or stomach upset or nausea um, or any kind of rash um, rarely can happen. Those are rather very mild and gets better uh, when you stop the drug. The major toxicity of hydroxychloroquine that we tell patients is eye toxicity, which by the way, develops after taking hydroxychloroquine for years. It rarely, rarely ever develops in a short span of time that we are talking about giving to a COVID-19 patients for about five to 10 days. <clears throat> Much bigger problem is an abnormality in the electric signal of the heart called QT prolongation, which is by the way, mostly seen with chloroquine rather than hydroxychloroquine. So patients taking chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine need to be monitored by an EKG as well as checking for the other drugs that the patient might be taking, which could also cause electric abnormality of the heart. So if you're already on a drug that causes QT prolongation, which is a type of electric abnormality of the heart, and you take hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine, these two drugs can have an additive effect um, can, and ca can cause harmful uh, effect to the heart. We also routinely recommend checking blood counts and uh, basic uh, chemistry or electrolytes on patients while taking these drugs. In the end, I would like to summarize the risk by giving you a simple statement that a rheumatologist considered hydroxychloroquine as the safest drug that they give amongst all the drugs that they use for autoimmune disease. And typically it's the first drug we use for various autoimmune conditions because of the safety profile of this drug. The next question is, how does these anti-malarial drugs work against COVID-19? It is thought that these drugs prevent the binding of COVID-19 when it infects us and we inhale the virus. It prevents the virus binding to the cell surface of our body. And also, this virus, uh, the, the chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine increase the pH of the cells, making it very difficult for virus to survive. This study in 2005 showed that chloroquine is a potent inhibitor of SARS, which is severe acute respiratory syndrome, which is also a type of coronavirus very similar to the coronavirus or COVID-19 infection that we have currently ongoing. Now, this was not a human um, a uh, study or a human test. This was a study in lab, which showed that the drug was effective even if it was given before 
or after exposure to virus, suggesting both the prophylactic use or preventative use as well as treatment use of this drug in the setting of coronavirus. Here I present another study in 2004, which basically showed the same thing that in the laboratory experiment, it was seen that chloroquine inhibits this severe acute respiratory syndrome or SARS type of coronavirus quite effectively. Next is, can we use these drugs prophylactically? That means without having the infection to protect ourselves from a possible COVID-19 infection. And my answer is absolutely not for various reasons. First of all, it's not completely proven by the highest standards of scientific evidence that this drug works against COVID-19 infection. And there is absolutely no evidence that this drug could be used as a preventative measure or for prophylaxis. Second, there is a risk of taking these drugs, especially cardiac abnormalities. For that reason, the risk benefit ratio does not work in favor of taking this drug for preventative measures. We all heard the news that Arizona man actually died after taking chloroquine, which is a common chemical being used to clean the fish tanks. Next, the most important reason is that if we start using these drugs for preventative measures in large number of patients, then people who are actually sick with this infection may not get the drug. There is already shortage of this drug in US and several other countries. So it's my humble request to you that don't use this drug for just preventative measure against this virus. Remember that you can actually prevent the infection much more effectively by staying at home rather than taking hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine without any indication of infection. Also, the patients who are currently on hydroxychloroquine for various autoimmune diseases, uh, whether it's lupus or rheumatoid arthritis and so on, uh, then would not get their treatment of their autoimmune disease if everyone starts taking it for prophylactic needs. And I know this firsthand as my patients are worried that they may not get their hydroxychloroquine or plaquenil for their treatment given this crisis of COVID-19 as any as if everyone start using it for preventative purposes. My advice to the patients who are currently on hydroxychloroquine would be to get these drugs early through your doctors and make sure you have enough two to three months supply of these drugs uh, for your own clinical need. Otherwise, if this drug is stopped, your autoimmune disease is at risk for flaring up. Another reason is how long are you going to take this drug for preventative measures? The COVID-19 infection is likely to last for weeks to months. So how long are you going to take these drugs? And if you're going to take the longer you're going to take this drug, higher the risk of any problems with these drugs. The only exception to this I can think is a healthcare worker who have been exposed to a COVID-19 patient. That healthcare worker is at extremely high risk for getting this infection. In fact, the Italy data shows that the 10 to 20 percent of all the patients were actually healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, medical staff who were taking care of these sick patients. So if those patients or those uh, people who are exposed to COVID-19 infected patients like to take this drug as a preventative measure, I can still understand. But overall, the evidence for preventative measure um, is rather lacking. Last but not the least is my final take on the use of this drug against COVID-19. I do believe based on the evidence that this drug works on patients with COVID-19 effectively. However, it remains to be proven by the highest standard of scientific evidence. And given the low cost of this drug, as well as excellent safety profile of this drug, this drug should be given at this point um, early in patients with COVID-19 infection. With that, I would like to thank you for listening and please subscribe to the channel uh, for future videos. Thank you.